When I first came, um, well, it, it was kind of a cultural shock when I came because it looked like a war zone, especially on Hunts Point. I remember when I wanted to come visit the sisters, the taxi drivers from Manhattan refused to bring me, so I took the subway. So there were a lot of burnt out buildings and it was um, completely, I didn't feel comfortable. At night we could hear gunshots and um, there was a lot of drugs. but. Uh, now it, I can see there's a big transformation and it has changed quite a bit because our prayers, they don't just stay here. They go outside the walls and it reaches many people. In the rising of the sun to its setting, out of science perfect beauty shines. Our God comes, he keeps silence no longer. Before him, party The Dominican usually is located in, in urban places. It's good because it's a witness to the people. You know, we have this very close to us, a place where they can find those juvenile delinquency uh, kids. And when they see our statue there in the garden, and they, it reminds them, oh, those nuns are praying for us. The people are walking and are driving along Bruckner Boulevard and they see the monastery. They remind them of the nuns there praying for us. And of course, praying to what? To whom? To God. Because it's sending them a message. You know, you see some of the prostitutes come around here. And when they see us, oh, sister, uh, pray for me. I mean, you know, they ask prayers. I was on extern duty there and, you know, they, they respect us, you know, these people. We, we don't preach like the missionaries go out there and talk about God and this and that. Oh, we don't. But we are just here inside. We are cloistered nuns, as you know. So when they pass by and see the monastery, that's way, one way of preaching. Each sister has a, a job in the monastery. We have a life of prayer, uh, work, study, and recreation, which is important. And um, that's, um, it, it's a very beautiful life, the monastic life. You know, when you give your life totally to God, you're completely free. You know, it's because some people, they ask us, well, don't you miss? Um, things out there, you know, but when you're totally dedicated to God, actually you don't because God fulfills all your needs. Well, you know, we like to invite somebody. How many are they? Huh? Eddie. Eddie. Eddie, 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 young people. Eddie? Oh, oh wow. where are they going to be? A in boys the, and girls? In the extern chapel. In the boys and girls? It's a sacred music. I know, is it boys and girls? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably have to clear the chairs and clip. Space. 80 people. So, oh, so are, you, are we having, uh, I'm sorry, benediction first or vespers? Benediction. benediction. Oh, and then vespers. And then we'll enjoy so, 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 I pray for each human person in the whole world when I, you know, I, I include everyone, including, you know, uh, the people in the neighborhood, my family, the priests and seminarians that were founded to pray for. I met the sisters as a seminarian. They've been praying for me since I was in the seminary, and then they, their prayers got me through to, to ordination, and now I'm a priest, and it's been a big blessing. It's, it's a beautiful vocation, and I thank God for that. point. Um, I've been here 30 years. I think the area has, uh, has gone on a long 
uh, long and, and uh, positive reconstruction. I think growing up it was a lot tougher than what it is now, and I think I, I am proud of Hunts Point. It's come a long way. I mean, it definitely has a lot of work to do still, but it's overcome a lot of different stigmas and uh, tragedies and changes. But overall, the construction has been positive, and things have definitely changed for the better. So I love Hunts Point. I remember him when he used to come with his twin brother, uh, Louis, when they were about like five or six to the monastery. And at that time, I used to have uh, the extra on duty on Fridays. I used to answer the doorbell when he was around 15. He and his brother um, wanted to be baptized, and they asked me to be their godmother. I have a very special godmother who's been in the monastery. All the time that I've been in the community, she's been here. And as a child, I used to come here to see her. She used to take us into the chapel. We used to say a prayer. And she's just special in many ways. She's definitely brought God into my life and has helped me uh, decipher my religion, decipher my faith, and help my faith be very strong. So she's played a, a very important part of my life in terms of understanding and knowing God, actually for me and my family. You know, I consider him like my spiritual son, you know, <laughs> I feel like a spiritual mother to him. I've known him since he was quite young. We, we always get very positive feedback uh, because they said that, that our presence here makes them feel that the neighborhood is safe and that God is watching over them. And just hearing the bells ringing or seeing the monastery, they, they um, have a lot of hope in their lives. <laughs>